So, Corey, uh, I didn't get to see this tonight. What's the buzz on B-movie? Oh, oh Jesus God. Christ. The buzz is it's more like a C-movie. Oh, oh no, like that's any better. I know. <laughs> Both of y'all. No, the, the buzz is if you've seen any animated movie with a talking animal in it, then you've seen this movie. Except this is not as good as those other movies. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, look, it's right on par with all those other movies. Are you saying it's as good as Ants? I liked Ants. Ants was pretty good. Ants no, 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 no. I, I thought Ants was, was a superior no, movie. No, Over Ants is a better movie. Huh? Over the Hedge. Over the Hedge is much better than this. No, no. It's okay. All right. Damn, y'all got me. It's, it falls within that level of just cute. So is it, it. is it like Valiant? Remember Valiant? I didn't the, see Valiant. Nobody, oh, nobody saw Valiant. I oh, saw Val- yeah, Valiant. had a completely different issue going on. But no, no, I don't mean it's the same thing. I'm just like that that level of poor quality where it's not like it's not like we watch and you don't go like this sucks. But at the same time, you're like, eh, I could live my whole life without seeing. Here's that. the thing. They got Jerry Seinfeld to agree to do something. Oh, hell, I don't know. I'll be in one of those animated things. You know, those things those guys do. What's, what's up with that? What's the deal with all <laughs> these animated talking yeah, yeah. animals? Who yeah. are these people? Actually, Introduce me so I can get paid a lot. That That is probably one case where Jerry Seinfeld was sitting around and just thinking about nothing and like, why is it that bees do this and that? And they're like, well, shit, it's come from Jerry Seinfeld. Let's make a movie. Well, right? Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't make it sound like, like somebody came to Jerry Seinfeld and he had nothing better to do. He is all over this thing. Jerry Seinfeld has hijacked TV, especially NBC. You cannot watch an NBC show without Jerry Seinfeld's ass breaking in the middle of it to show you a trailer for B-Movie. And the thing Here's is, a B-Movie junior. Took over an episode of 30 Rock to have it be all about him making B-Movie. Yeah, you know, I actually think that Jerry Seinfeld went around New York with a gun, busting in the studios, <laughs> telling people, you're going to talk about fucking B-movie. He actually yeah. showed up at the Cannes Film Festival wearing a giant bee suit and flew down over the crowd. I mean, this is the Cannes Film Festival. You, you realize, he, Jerry Seinfeld is not an idiot. He had to have known that even for a comedian, this is like just almost reprehensible. He must have thought that this is the funniest movie ever, and clearly his thumb is on no one's pulse. It just smacks of desperation, because the fact is, Jerry Seinfeld was the most successful comedian in the world. Who, de- who relied who, entirely who, who, yeah. on the talents of his friends. Right, right. But like after you know so many years of Seinfeld, that's over. Okay, now what? Yep. And he's like, I can't go out and fail. Well, There's no way I can do that. He should have called Larry David because whoever wrote this thing is no Larry David. You know, that's the thing about it. I mean, Jerry Seinfeld, the only reason why they were pushing this so hard because Jerry Seinfeld still shits gold when it comes to comedy shows. I mean, he sells out. He's sure. Jerry Seinfeld. So when he said, I want to write this movie about a... Now, check this out. And this is the sum of the movie right here. When Jerry Seinfeld walks in a room and says, I want to write a movie about a bee that takes humanity to court and almost destroys the world... That is the actual movie. Okay, now that that actually sounds interesting. That's uh, it's crazy. And that's and you know, and so, so somebody's gonna be like, "Well, shit, it's Jerry Seinfeld. Shoot, whatever you want, man. Here's a bag of money, a hundred million dollars. Go off and do your thing." It's it feels max though. I mean, it does sound interesting, right? If that was like the plot where it felt like it kind of naturally got there, but it just kind of takes this left turn in the middle of the film. Goes, you know what would be funny? Like one of those type things, and then it doesn't really know where to go with it after that. It's like, oh. And it ends up with like an airpl- airplane type sequence for the last 20 minutes of it. You know, oh, Jesus bees Christ. must save the humans in the plane type thing. You're like, where in the hell is it? What? They're just, they're, they're throwing balls with subjects into, into a pit and pulling one out randomly. And saying, oh, wait, so, so, the, so Seth MacFarlane wrote this? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, <clears throat> see, I, I, I don't want, what, go ahead. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I wish they'd had me on that jury because I'm allergic to bees things. What? So I just slammed the gavel down on those bees. Well, it's funny because you think, like, after looking at this story, you think maybe Jerry Seinfeld got stung by a bee and he's allergic and his mind went crazy because it, it is a weird story. That's actually kind of the saving grace of the movie. I mean, listen if you're talking bad about it because the story, that script is, uh, you don't know what direction it's going at one point. It floats between being really funny and very mediocre in between all these B puns that you have in there, of course. So, I mean, it's, it's, it gets to a point where I just, I, I almost like had a gun to my head. If I said, if I hear one more B pun. <laughs> and they went through them all. And yeah, anyone that they could think of. I mean, you, you and, cannot think of a B pun that they did not use. But here's a, except here's for a, maybe B Arthur. I don't yeah, remember hearing B stands for <laughs> Bronco, that's TW Bass, Megos, and Parabolas. Apparently he knows them all. Yeah. Um, but uh i mean they, i'm surprised they didn't have like b guy from the simpsons come out somewhere in this i mean but it's it, the I thing. yeah exactly but uh 
It's, I mean, we're talking bad about it. When we say it's cute, I mean, it really is. I don't mean it's bad. It's actually a really cool looking movie. The designs are great. It's very colorful. Yeah. I enjoy it just looking at it. And it's only an hour and a half. So you Wait. say the saving grace is the humor. I don't agree with you. I didn't think it was that funny. But I didn't the say saving humor. grace was, he said that it was he, cute. He said that it, that it was pretty. It's, there's a lot of yellow. I said it was cute. Oh, okay. and it's pretty. Okay. I, well, it is pretty. It is definitely pretty. The, it, there are sequences that, you know, made me kind of like rotate around and like floating out of your seat because it's so well done. You know, like those, the, the traditional animation things where it moves real fast through a bunch of stuff, really well done here. But that's really the only good thing I can say about it. And that's enough. That's enough for your kids, certainly. Yeah. I got to ask Corey. What? I got, I got two words. No, don't you do it. Shrek 3. What about Shrek 3? How does this relate to Shrek 3? Because, you know, we all walked out, and, uh, you know, hating on it. And you were like, ah, you know. Uh, I'm not going to even get into discussion. This is stupid. I mean, you know, the thing is, it's probably right on. It's probably slightly better than Shrek 3. It is better than yeah. Shrek 3 only because we already saw Shrek two exactly. times before that. I mean, Sh- Shrek 3 at points. I mean, we talk about desperation. That was a sequel reaching for desperation. I mean, yeah, this that, is that, that was a sequel that was only about money. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and this to a certain degree is about money because Jerry Seinfeld is involved. I, I think it's this is more not, not as much about money as it is about Jerry's pride. It, it could be. Now, here's what I think. Now, I don't want to write the guy's movie because I think kids will see this and I think kids will enjoy it. And it's a good family movie. I mean, nobody's going to walk out really disappointed. I think. Sure. The I think though with with it being Jerry, oh, here's the thing about Jerry Seinfeld though. Let me b- before I forget, when Jerry Seinfeld is it, there's even as an animated B, there are points where it seems like he's trying too hard yeah. to reach for this kind of comedy, yeah. which is the family CG animated comedy. Sure, the, but there are moments of side humor where Jerry Seinfeld just has a mannerism, or he just says something that's that's, that's you know just a, a, a little side. Uh, or let me see, what am I trying? A little side phrase. You know, where you could tell he was ad libbing, and it's actually funny when he's when you, those little bits where you can see him being Jerry Seinfeld right. in the character and in the writing. It's actually funny, but as I said, it seems like he's trying too hard to make a family movie. I feel like he probably should have made something a little more risky, like a PG thirteen animated movie if you wanted to. I just right. go off and make another comedy. You know, why do this? Well, that's what yeah. I'm saying. Plus, you know what? I, I'm almost at this point now when when people pull Chris Rock to do a voice, I feel like they just they, they're not even trying. Like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, of course we get Chris Rock. He's funny doing anything. And Chris Rock is in the movie for, like, probably a total of five minutes, and they have a big, and Chris Rock in the credits. <laughs> That's yeah. funny, because you remember that first trailer with all them dressed in bee suits on I the window? I hate wind? that trailer. Yeah, that was a, a terrible trailer. <laughs> <laughs> and Chris Rock's all over that. Made him dress up in that funny suit and get sprayed with water. Yeah, That's no, I yeah. think somebody's giving the brother work. Come but, on. You know, I'm watching this. I agree with you. The best parts of the part where, where you feel Seinfeld being Seinfeld and you really want an animated Kramer and an animated George and an animated <laughs> Elaine. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's all you want. Yeah. I want, I, I want I, what I want is I want Michael Richards put alone in a room with Chris Rock. <laughs> oh, boy. That'd be, that's what I want. that'd be yeah, fun. That'd be a ladybug. Like, nigga! Everybody's a nigga! Y'all niggas! <laughs> if we had like Michael Richards go around stinging just black people. <laughs> I hate niggas. I nigga here. This is nigga there. Well, there is a sort of Jewish conspiracy thing going on throughout the whole thing with the bees and their honey trying to get all the honey to themselves, you know? Yeah, that's that, that is, that's true. It's like the, the it's the, there. Are come you on. serious? All, oh, absolutely. All the bees in this movie are Jewish. I don't oh, know what they're trying to Jewish, say. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's like the, the hive might. <laughs> that, the, 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 you've got the a hive with the hive mind. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. And only working with each other. Man, that hive might as well be one big temple. They don't trust outsiders. Like the rule number one: don't talk to humans, or in other words, anybody else. So, so yeah. is, is Mel Gibson a can of raid? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, man, I th- this review is actually more fun than this movie. Actually, but I don't. I'm not saying that in a bad way. Really, I'm I'm on the bottom half of matinee, but I'm going to give it a matinee because I mean the movie can be entertaining if you go in there with very low expectations. And we're the ones that are scrutinizing it. I'm, I'm telling you, families are going to go in there and they're going to enjoy it. I think you're generally you're probably right. But for me, this is just a rental. Like I said, there wasn't much here besides the visuals. And they were nice, admittedly, but I was bored halfway through. No, I was that, really bored by halfway through. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead and say it again. <laughs> I, was, I was really bored by halfway through. No, there were points where I was – my mind wandered in that third act. I mean, it was just going in so many directions. And usually that keeps you interested. Like, huh, I wonder what's going to happen. But it's like, man, I'm tired of this uh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you guys ended up getting stung? <laughs> 
what is with you, man? You did you write this movie? Did you help Jerry Seinfeld? Because <laughs> it's about as much a non sequitur as most of the plot. <laughs> no, it, it's just funny. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I wish I didn't recognize anybody else in the movie, by the way, except Chris John Rock. Goodman. John, John I'm talking lawyer. about as, as far as other comedians. I mean, it was. Oh. I thought this was a big project for his friends, and I thought like Chris Rock is the only person I recognize. Because and that's another thing, man. They they always have to have the obligatory black cartoon character there yes. talking like this. Oh yeah, talking crazy, you know. Yeah. At, look at me! I'm the black character. I, did, I guess yeah. looking at me right now, I don't make. <laughs> I was gonna say, kind of like Spill. <laughs> it actually works out a good joke. Cause I started thinking about that. I was like, yeah, I was like, hmm, I really, <laughs> hmm. you know, kind of like, damn. 